Well, this morning we have uh, to talk about fitness as one of those lifestyle things that we often discuss. Sometimes we even get scared of uh, considering it. So what exactly are we talking about here? Um, exercising, moving your body and all those things, you hear it all the time. People have smart watches. I don't even, they don't, <laughs> sometimes some watches are smarter than some people. Um, it's counting your footsteps, how many footsteps you need to take in a day. Do you even care whether it's counting anything? Anyway, let me not do much of the talking. Uh, Joel Uzamere joins us this morning. He is Director, Institute of Registered Exercise Professionals, IREP. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having okay. me. Okay, let's jump right into it. We don't, yes. it's, it's call this introductory. So, uh, when we talk about fitness, what are we talking about? In, that's an interesting question. Uh, the reason why that is interesting is because many people define that in different ways. But I'll tell you the, the right meaning, and then we'll talk about other things. So fitness is when you have enough energy to perform your daily task without fatigue and still have enough energy for emergency or leisure. Plus, the uh, American Sports College of Many adds this, leaving a healthy lifestyle because you can be doing those things and maybe you're smoking what, or you're doing... bro slow down slow down um, <clears throat> <clears throat> go again <laughs> <laughs> okay so fit so the thing about fitness is it's fitness is not about it's not it's not about it's not about cosmetic it's not about how you look and all that it's function yes fitness is for instance you're a broadcaster do you have enough energy to perform your role and then get home and can still play with your kids or do you get home and you have Fatigued. Fatigued. And you're thinking about, you know, you don't have time for anything. And so when people work, they say, you know, I don't need to go to the gym. I don't need to exercise because I look okay. I mean, I sit all day. All I need to do is just stretch. They've forgotten that the body is composed of different systems that must be um, trained in order to perform or to work in such a way that you can work if efficiently. What you want is optimal living, not just living. Anybody can be leaving, but what you want to do is be effective at your work, be effective at home, be effective everywhere. And to do that, you need to train some systems. And usually when we are talking about these systems, we're talking about things like your cardiovascular system. And when we say cardiovascular system, we're just talking about that which helps you to uh, maybe breathe properly because you have a respiratory system there, how blood gets through all your system. But more importantly, how oxygen and energy gets to all the cells in your body so you can perform um, um, whatever action. How does um, exercising um, come into the, into the melee? Because, you know, we hear that people are always talking about, you know, I want to go to the gym, I want to exercise my body, I yeah. want to do press-ups, I want to do all those <laughs> things. You mentioned the fact that sometimes uh, there are exercises that people carry out wrongly yeah. earlier. Yeah. Uh, how does that happen? It's exercising. So, uh, as you know, um, I... I run the Institute of Exercise Professionals, and one of the reasons why I run that institute is, as a GP um, master trainer, I ran into problems finding out that most instructors in the gyms, they know how to give prescriptive exercise. Prescriptive in the sense that not everyone that comes in a gym can join any class. It's not the program you give to A that you give to B. Okay. It's not the program you give to C. So you can't just see a program online and then do it. No, you first start with physical assessment and then train the client on corrective exercise because by nature, there are ways we move. For instance, let me give you an example. You, you know you are busting our bubbles, right? What do you mean? It's the fact. You are, you are, you are literally, you are, you, are, you are tearing our theology into shreds. Well, the fitness theology as of now is, is, is well, it's getting better. I must say that. Uh, my industry, uh, the fitness industry is doing so much now. Um, and I must tell you that we, as at five years ago, I, we had in our records uh, maybe less than 50 certified trainers. Now we have over 400 certified trainers across the country. So people are waking up to the fact that they can be effective as personal trainers, as fitness trainers, without education. Okay. And so you find, for instance, what I was explaining about the squats. Um, when I go and do a gym assessment and I'm asking instructors to do the right thing, to show me for safety reasons, how they train their clients and how to pick weights, how to do the squats, how to use the bike and so many other workouts. I see, just by doing that, I know whether you're certified or not. 
want to show us? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Please go ahead. <laughs> Let me give you an example. So, for instance, uh, everybody squats. Okay. Everybody squats. And so, when someone wants to squat, you see them do this. Now, this exercise is called greeting in the morning. Yeah, it's not called squat. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, my, I, just, I just made that up. The point <laughs> is, that is not the form. The minute your form is wrong, then that's not the exercise. Why? Because in the human body, when we're talking about exercise, we have what we call prime movers, meaning that there are specific muscles that you are working. Okay. And there are specific joints that are performing that action that you're working. Okay? So when I do this, for instance, I don't know if you can see me, but if I do this, that's me greeting. And I can greet my mom, my dad, once a day. That's okay. fine. Now, the knee is the weakest joint in the body. Oh, so how, what's the right way to do the squat so, before you go there? Exactly. Now, the thing is, the squats, the movement for the squat is the glutes. That's your bum. Okay. And so when you want to move, the prime mover, which is the glute, must be the one moving. Okay. Not your armstrings or quads, which is the thigh muscles that you have here. And so when you think it's your thigh muscles, what you will do is go down, yeah, put in a lot of stress on this knee, okay. and then you come up. Okay. Before you know it, you start to have knee injuries. Okay. And the older you get, the more the it gets. quick, yes, you know what you get. So when you want to do a squat, um, the first thing you need to do is ensure that the distance between your legs are the distance between your shoulders. Oh. So it's called shoulders width apart. Okay. Then side view, your bum is going back. Okay. Now, if you notice in my legs here, my knees are not coming forward. Okay. And, that's, and this is where the safety, where you must watch for safety. Okay. Okay. So you go backwards. And that's because this is an inch joint. You know, a door. Yes. It's an inch joint. A door doesn't open this way. It opens one way or the other. Yes. And that's kind of one of the examples on... Things um, that people do wrongly. Sorry. Yes. One, that's just one exercise that people do wrongly. Okay. And so if you do not ensure that your trainer is certified and knows biomechanics and knows the physiology, how the body moves, you know, what joints and how can they move. If they don't know that, then they will definitely get you injured. Because exercise is not about muscles. It's not about just having fun in the gym. Exercise is health. It's health. It's part of wellness. Okay. It's yeah. health. Now, you, when you talk about it in the light of wellness, so you, but before I go there, you also spoke about um, the knees being the weakest joint, joint yes. and that people have been risking that, that yeah. getting on bikes. Yes. What do you mean? Yes. <laughs> so if you visit... Because the, even though Lagos State government has banned bikes, we still no. so have when I some say, hinterlands. Yeah, so well, when we say bikes, it's a broad word. Uh, what, what I mean is stationary bikes. These are okay. exercise bikes or sport bikes. It's the same. Yeah. <laughs> so what you want to ensure when you get on a bike that you've bought is that you want to ensure that the seat of that bike is at your waist level. Okay. So never just get on a bike because it's sitting down there in the gym. You must stay near the bike, then adjust the seat to your waist, to level, your waist to level. To your height. To the yes. height of your natural because, weight level. Yes, because weight. when you're using that bike without that adjustment, your knee, like what I was explaining about the knee joint, okay, will start to do this. Whereas what you want is it doing this. You see the point now? Okay. And so people, there are people that exercise and they are doing great in the gym and then they get injured. And we as trainers, personal tr trainers or fitness trainers, that's not what we want. We want you coming back to the gym. And we shouldn't be the reason why you're not coming back. Hmm. And so it's quite, it's very, very important because the, the human body is... It's quite complex. Mm. And so it's very important that you're doing the right movement at the right way. Okay. And even at the right intensity. Okay. Now, you know that in Nigeria, yeah. people go to work every day. They go into their offices. Most times people sit. Mm -hmm. But then it is also recommended that people would do a lot of moving around. In an environment where, for instance, a bank cashier has to sit, right? Mm -hmm. um, the accountant in the organization cannot be walking around with a calculator. No, sir. <laughs> he has to move around. <laughs> he has to sit at yeah. a place. Yeah. So we have a lot of people who do sedentary work who have to sit down, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, someone like my director normally should sit down, but I doubt he ever sits. But, <laughs> but that normally... You know, you know, people sit down, editors, yeah. they sit down to get their jobs yeah. done. Yeah. 
How do those people exercise? And they are doing nine to this five. Is, this is what I do for a living. This is what I do consulting for companies. See, that's why I said fitness is how, let me put it in a layman's way. It's how, how do I get you fit? But and you ensure that you don't lose your job. You get my point. So you still have to be at work. So what we have in fitness is that there are different types of, of exercises. For instance, in cardiovascular, there's something we call mid-long cardiovascular training. There's something we call mid mid cardiovascular training, what we call mid high cardiovascular training, meaning that if I want to get 500 calories out of you, or I want you to build a certain kind of, of, of physique, I can simply, using the FIT principle, that's what we call it, it's called the FIT principle, F-I-T-T, -I, I can tweak the frequency, tweak the intensity, tweak the type, or tweak the time. Any of those four things, the minute I tweak it, then I can give you the program that you want. So for people, that sit a lot, that that's what they do. What they need is 20 minutes of workout mm. before leaving work. And they, they, all, they need to do this five times a week, actually. There's nothing like three times a week, okay? Mm. Five times a week. Now, the 20 minutes, it's that you are keeping fit. You know, just walking around a, your compound for 20 minutes is better than just sitting in, in, in one spot, obviously. Can, can, can they space out the 20 minutes? Yes, yeah, so, no, no. so the thing about fitness is, um, you don't just get results with the heart. Mm. In fitness, there's something we call pulse razor. Mm. So when you start a workout, your body has not started to actually burn the energy that it requires. The body has three energy systems. Did you know that? Yeah. You just tell me about what I <laughs> So it, 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 it's not that this time you start working out, then you start. No, you need some time. And so, so we recommend that you have at least 20 minutes of workout um, between mid to high intensity, but we also recommend that you get a professional to do a fitness assessment for you so that they, are, they, they can be sure that you are ready to perform the kind of workout that they would design for you to meet your specific goal. Mm. Someone like you or anybody that sits should be performing exercises that strengthen their lower, um, their lower back muscle. Mm. Because what happens with most people that sit is that they begin to have uh, your, your lumbar spine area begins to have pain and then you're having lower back pains. Mm. So the, the trainer already knows that you sit, he knows you have only 20 minutes, he knows your lifestyle, and so he creates a program that fits that lifestyle. Mm. You, you see the point. Mm. And the things that are the excess in that lifestyle, he then advises you on how to stop doing that. Mm. You know, of course, so your nutrition is all part of it and then how active we'll, you we'll are. We'll come to that nutrition part maybe another time. Yes, but no I, problem. I need to speak to, to the the activities that people perform at work. Yes. What are the activities that people can perform at while work. they are at work? You've talked about walking. Yes. Anything yes. else? So, there are those who say you need to get a ball. Yeah. And those so, so the idea of, of uh, fitness or your body being active is movement. It's movement. Um, I, let me not be, give you another grammar, but um, there's something we also use. It's called metabolic equivalent. That chart, you can Google it. It's a simple chart. Okay. It tells you um, the rate of calories you burn per activity. Mm -hmm. So sitting down, for instance, is one met. And so when you stand up and you walk, it's about three mets. So that means that every chance you have to do any form of activity, take it. You want to pick up a file, don't send your secretary to pick up that file. Stand up, get the file, and come back. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I tell most of my clients, you are almost home. Most of us that are well-to-do, most of the people that I have as clients are well-to-do. Before you get to the estate, just take your running, your, your shoes, wear them, and tell the driver to be on his way and walk home. So even though you are busy, if you take your fitness seriously and someone can help you design your program, then that will happen. And then we infuse golf playing, squash playing, table tennis playing during the weekends. You know? So you cannot actually achieve that, life, that fitness, that fitness lifestyle if you're willing to take those extra steps. So essentially, at the end of the day, it depends on the individual. Yes, we, without you, we can't achieve the goal for you. Mm -hmm. we, we need you to achieve that goal, but it's something that can be done. It's something that can be done. Now, there are those who will also point to the fact that they don't sweat. <laughs> In fact, that, there are those who believe that, look, if you have not sweated, you have not exercised. Come on. Yeah, well, I mean, it's what we find. So, okay. you see, the funny thing about sweat is that it has nothing to do with fitness. Well, oh. let me put it this way. It's an hormonal gland. So, in a sense, I can sit down like this, and maybe because I'm nervous, and I start to sweat. 
Some people sweat more than others. So sweat is not um, how we measure intensity in fitness. We use other ways to measure intensity. We use what we call um, speech and response. Uh, we use your heart rate. For instance, let me just quickly say this. Um, there are other formulas, but this is a simple formula. If you take 220 minus your age, yeah, whatever that is, let's assume that you're 40. That's 180. That's your maximum heart rate. When you're doing cardiovascular exercise based on a particular program, you should be doing a percentage of that 180. Do you understand? That is how we calculate intensity. We don't calculate intensity by sweat. Sweat is not a measurement of intensity. No, no, yes, I know, but that is for you, professional. No, fact. Let me tell you why. See, let me say this to you. That's for you, the professional. The man out there, I mean, if you, are, you, are, you have to do treadmill, come on, man. How you, can you do you treadmill? You will sweat, sweat, but what I'm saying is that you will sweat. But sweat is not a measurement for intensity. Let me give you an example. If you want to lose weight, for instance, after 20, 25 minutes, you start to sweat. Mm -hmm. But you've not gone to what we call lipolytic um, energy, or let me just—you have not gotten your, your, the fat in your body has not started burning as at twenty minutes, but you are sweating, and then you tell yourself, "Oh wow, today was great." Of course. Whoa, <laughs> wow! And then you know you go home and like, man, I was at the gym today. Um, your body will be like, "Yeah," it doesn't know. Nothing will happen, and then people get frustrated. I've been going to the gym, I'm not losing weight. I've been going to the gym, I'm not losing weight. You won't lose weight because your body works in a certain way. And you have to ensure that you work out your body in the way that body is. So it's not about sweat. Now, is sweat great? Yes, it gives you this achievement. Wow, I'm sweating. But the other guy may not be sweating as much as you, but he has done more than you. That's the point. I, mean, I want you to sweat. It, it looks good on a, on, a, on a trainer when your client is sweating. I mean, it's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> but um, we, we use w different methods. And I think one of the easiest methods is what we call the box scale. We just say on a rate of 1 to 10, how tired are you? You see, we use rating system. And the guy says, I'm on a six. You know, that's not where you want to get to. Or he says, I'm on an eight. That's too much. Because do you know that it is dangerous for you to train or exercise at a high intensity? Do you know that a couple of people have died just some weeks back because they were training at a very high intensity? They, they dropped and the guy died. So it's a lot, I know. We, we are saying so many things, <laughs> but... It is the reality of, of, of fitness. Can we just put a pause on it right yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like A lot of you yeah, talking to us now. But we have to thank you very much. You know, the, let's just say that this is the beginning of conversations yeah. because, you know, fitness, I mean, we, you, you talked about, uh, there are so many things that we've not talked yes, about. We've broad. not talked about the place of sleep yes. in, 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 in fitness. Rest. You, we, we talked about, uh, we haven't talked about nutrition. nutrition. Yeah. We haven't talked about, and then you talked mm -hmm. about prescriptive exercise. Exactly. Prescriptive exercises sounds to me like, okay, if you have this particular kind of ailment, this is the kind of exercise that you should, you should be doing. Is yeah. that correct? That's a part of it. Okay. Another part of it is just you want to lose weight, but this is your age and this is your height and this is who you are. So based on all those factors, you can't do this exercise or you can't do that exercise. So we ensure that you do the exercise that is safe for you. That's what that prescriptive means. Go ahead. Um, Joel Uzamere. Yes. Thank you for busting our bubbles. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, he is Director of Registered Exercise Professionals, IREP. Joel Uzamere, thank you again for thank being you. here this morning. Truly appreciate your time. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay. One of the things, one of the exercises you do, besides your mouth, is you laugh. <laughs> right? Okay. Let's do a little bit of that with our home stretch. Oh, no, 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 no.